We are seeing some mixed signals in Queen Creek. It looks like there are some things that are uh, still on the cooler side of the market, but it looks like we're definitely taking a turn for a hotter market here in the future. Overall, based on everything that I'm seeing, it looks like it's a balanced market. So I've got uh, Jeremy Fierstein here uh, with his take on the market. And I'm just curious, what do you think of the market? Do you think we're in a balanced market, more of a hot seller's market or a cool buyer's market? Yeah, well, good morning, Scott. It's crazy interesting because we're in a market where inventory is down, but interest rates are up. And I've never really seen anything quite like it. Um, I think all of the statistics kind of point to that it's that we're more than a in a in a seller's market right now, but buyers are a little weary because of the high interest rates. And so what I've noticed that's been causing is additional days on the market uh, in particular price points and buyers who are either all in or who are saying, you know what, I'm going to wait until interest rates go down. Sure. Well, that's an interesting take for sure. And well, just to do some quick introductions, my name is Scott Wynn. I'm with the Wynn and Egan team at Neo Home Loans. Um, I'm a mortgage professional and I like to keep an eye on what's going on in the local market because I think it does uh, me uh, some value in terms of being able to better uh, service the clients that I assist. But I always like having a real estate professional, a local expert in the area to help give us some insight on the market. And that uh, is Jeremy Fierstein today here with uh, ERA real estate hunt uh, fierce team. So thanks and welcome for joining me. Um, what I think would be, yeah, best to do at this point is kind of dive into each metric because they all tell at least a little bit of a different story. And I think the best place to start is you started talking about is inventory. Inventory really kind of gives us an idea of whether we're in a balanced market or not and how much available homes are on the market. So generally, if you look at the National Association of Realtors, as an example, they define a balanced market of somewhere between the four to six months. I know the Valley generally leans a little bit more uh, towards a lower inventory level in general. Um, we're, Queen Creek, we're sitting at 3.2 months. So what's your opinion on that? I mean, we've definitely seen a decline over the last few months from a high of around five and a half months, but what's your take on the, the months of inventory? Yeah, I, I think that Queen Creek is pretty indicative of, of most of the other cities within the Valley. I think that um, a lot of homeowners um, were blessed with great interest rates over the, what I call COVID real estate era. And uh, people are sitting on two and three quarters percent, three percent, three and a quarter percent. And um, those homeowners don't really have a need or a desire to sell right now when they have such a great interest rate and they have so much equity in the house. What I'm finding that more people are doing rather than moving and, and upgrading uh, into a new home is they're pulling cash out of their existing home to remodel what they have to be able to potentially hold on to a, a similar life interest rate. Sure. So with sellers not needing to move and having great rates and, and low monthly payments, there's there's just lack of homes available on the market. But what I find interesting is that we look at the next metric, which I think, again, you alluded to in the intro, is that generally when we see low inventory, we see lower days on market because there's more competition for the homes that are there. And so um, with this days on market, we're sitting at 88.9 days on market, um, just slightly down from the peak just last month at 98 and a half uh, days on market. So um, I know you said that that's probably because of the fact that uh, interest rates are a little bit higher. So there's not as much buyer demand. Is there anything else that you think that's contributing to those days on market, maybe higher than what you would expect with the low inventory? environment i mean you know definitely definitely the the, the higher interest rates is, is what i believe is driving that number um you know I, I'm, I'm seeing homes that are uh completely upgraded and, and turnkey um uh, recently remodeled that are going in, in much lower than than 80 days but for you know average homeowners who may not have upgraded their their house in, in seven to ten years um that seems to be what the going rate is in terms of how long your house is going to sit on the market, even with an active and aggressive uh, agent doing your 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 campaign marketing for you. Sure, and obviously every circumstance is a little bit different. Different houses have a higher demand than other houses, different areas, things like that. So all that can certainly play into days on market. But um, it looks like maybe we've turned the corner. We've started decreasing a little bit. We'll have to see if that trend continues next month. Um, 
But along those same lines are sales and sales are definitely picking up. Uh, we, we saw a high about this time last year at 539. We dropped down to a low a couple months ago of around 200 sales. Currently we're sitting at 374 sales. So do you think that we're just gonna continue to see that increase as we're into the spring and summer buy season? Um, yeah, I, I think everything that's gonna happen this year is gonna be much more slow and steady than it has been in the, in the last couple of years. I think interest rates are going to play a, a big part in all of this and what happens with the, you know, when we take the rate today and then we look at what it, what's it going to be in six months? What's it going to be towards the end of 2023? I think that all kind of uh, uh, helps shape what the rest of the year looks like. Um, but I, I, I do see kind of a steady flow of, of number of homes being purchased, which I know is considerably down from the last couple of years. But I think really as a as a real estate agent, what I'm kind of excited and waiting for is that point where we can normalize our market again. So we don't have the high COVID real estate market and we don't have this crazy low inventory, but where we can kind of come to come together and have that four to six month worth of inventory uh, with home prices or home values that are, you know, inclining at a moderately steady single digit rate. And I think it's it's a mindset more than anything. I think we just got used to a very abnormal real estate and mortgage market for a few years, right? I mean, we had incredibly low inventory and a ton of buyer demand because interest rates were so incredibly low, it made homes more affordable. Um, and that just wasn't a sustainable real estate market. And now that we are getting back to more of, let's say, a, a normal market, I mean, really, interest rates, although they've gone up very, very quickly, and we'll talk about that here a little bit later, they're not necessarily out of the realm of what's normal when you look historically. And I think it's just a matter of everybody getting their head wrapped around the fact that we're probably not going to see interest rates back in the threes. And uh, it's just a matter of, again, kind of redefining that normal, if you will. And I think that's kind of what you're saying as well. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, I would. And, um, you know, I think you bring up a few interesting points. When I moved to the Valley, it was uh, the mid eighties and my parents bought a home in North Phoenix for us to live and grow up in. And they had a 16% interest rate. So I think that interest rate is really all about kind of, you know, where someone is uh, in, in any particular moment in time as to what they're used to. And during the COVID market, we all got used to those very low single digit uh, interest rates. Um, you know, the other point that, that I think is worth noting is, um, you know, <clears throat> It still is a real estate market where sellers are sensitive to what buyers are experiencing when it comes to interest rates. So in any real estate transaction, there's an opportunity for negotiation. And with the buyers that I'm working with now, we're really kind of focusing that, that leverage point on negotiation to buying the interest rates down. So if a 6.5% interest rate feels high to someone or a 7% interest rate feels high to someone, or maybe even a 6% interest rate feels high to someone, the opportunity to negotiate with those sellers and ask the sellers to help to contribute towards that interest rate buy down will take someone from a 6% and bring them down to a 5%. And I think people, uh, at least my buyers, my clients are feeling comfortable with the fact that those options do exist. Uh, other people that I meet don't know that those options exist. So it's really all about um, your agent being able to negotiate with the listing agent and, and kind of maximize the value so that a home buyer can get into something that, you know, fulfills their generally most important criteria is a, is a reasonable interest payment or a reasonable mortgage payment. Right. I think it all comes down to affordability. And so playing into that, of course, are home prices. Um, and again, as we look at the metrics here, it seems like everything's kind of turning the corner. Inventory's uh, reducing. We are seeing days on market reduce. We're seeing sales go up. And now we're starting to see the median sales price bump up a little bit as well. Uh, last month, we hit a low 427500 Um this month we're at 450,000. So again, maybe we're turning the corner. Um, not sure, but any thoughts on the sales prices and where you think uh, those are headed? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, you ask a dozen people, you're going to get a dozen different answers. And the right. fact of the matter is no one can predict the future of the real estate market. That being said, with you know, all of the podcasts and, and classes and educational data that, that I review, um, <clears throat> It appears to be kind of a little bit of a flat or even if so overall down market in 2023. 
I think that the predictions for 2024 gets back to growth. I mean, growth is what we're all used to in Arizona um, appreciation. Um, but I think the appreciation from here on out, um, you know, pending any worldly uh, activities, I think appreciation is going to continue to to get back to slow and steady growth. I think that Arizona is going to, or, or the Phoenix metro market is going to get back to the point where um, uh, where buyers are going to have moderate appreciation after they buy their home. And I think that, you know, kind of the American dream home buyer situation, I think is gonna start coming back um, again on, on a little bit more of a, of a moderate pace. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you 100%. And you had mentioned a little bit earlier, the negotiation options and the next two metrics kind of paint the picture in terms of sellers uh, being willing to negotiate and how that can be utilized from a buyer perspective. And so the first metric is the sold to list ratio, which says the home was listed for this amount, how much did it actually sell for? And right now it's been pretty steady over the last probably six to eight months in Queen Creek sitting right around that 98% mark. And that's exactly where we are this month at 98%, which means that um, sellers have discounted their price from listing price by 2%. Now, obviously there's lots that play into that, but um, that definitely shows that there's some at least willingness to negotiate. Would you agree? I do. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I think again, you know, sellers are, are looking to sell their home in a reasonable amount of time. And if, you know, 90 days isn't a reasonable enough amount of time and they're, they're, they're capturing offers that are, you know, somewhat reasonable, then um, I, I think sellers are willing to give buyers a little extra something to make sure that, that they could get into their home on, on what they might consider a good offer. Sure. And so along those same lines are also seller paid closing costs. And I kind of like to look at seller paid closing costs in two ways. How much are sellers willing to give to buyers to cover selling paid closing costs, right? But also what percentage of sellers are contributing to the closing costs for buyers. And what we've seen is a steady increase over the last six months or so uh, we're at currently just shy of $11,000 on average for seller paid closing costs of those sellers that are contributing and about 58% are helping the buyer. So that seems to be a pretty high number. Although again, kind of similar to a lot of these other metrics, we're starting to turn a corner it seems. And it seems like those are decreasing both in the amount uh, as well as the percentage uh, in, in sellers that are willing to contribute. So do you think that that'll decline as sales pick up and inventory continues to reduce? Well, you know, we're not we're not in the market anymore where we're getting multiple offers for a property. And I and I think as long as we can kind of avoid that scenario with inventory increasing, I think that sellers will always be willing to negotiate if the terms, the overall terms of a buyer's offer is 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 gonna be strong. So I don't necessarily believe that that seller pay closing costs are gonna change. I think that um you know, I, I think that there's buyers out there that may be willing to pay full price on a property in order to get those concessions to help buy down that interest rate. So, you know, I'm a little on the fence in terms of what we see with with the prepaid closing costs, but I think it's it's obviously a direct correlation to how many homes are on the market, how many buyers are looking for homes, and how much leverage do the buyers or sellers have in being able to negotiate? Because back in the in the era where we had, you know, 20, 30 offers per property. There really weren't any seller paid closing costs that were taking place. So it's nice to get back to them. It's nice to continue to be able to, to help first time home buyers and, and help people that, you know, families that have goals of getting into homes. Um, and so I, I, I appreciate where we are now with closing costs. Yeah, it's definitely a supply and demand type issue, right? I mean, of course, if there's less supply and high demand, there's going to be less negotiation that's going to be able to help buyers out. But if, if we see a more calm, even market rather than the frenzied market we saw a couple of years ago, then those will probably stay fairly steady. I agree 100%. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about interest rates. You've mentioned it a few times. Obviously, that plays into the affordability aspect for uh, home buyers, and we started to see some decline in interest rates. And for those that uh, don't understand why we're maybe seeing the decline, I want to share that mortgage rates follow inflation. And that's why we saw a, a, a quick jump up in mortgage rates um, a while back. And we went from the, the low threes up into the sevens. And we saw that because inflation spiked. 
And as everybody knows, the Fed is doing everything it can to uh, reduce inflation, and they're doing that by increasing rates. But what they're not doing is they're not increasing mortgage rates. What they're doing is they're increasing short-term lending rates, rates on things like credit cards and auto loans, student loans. That just makes things more expensive. If you want to buy a TV and you're going to put it on credit, it's going to make that TV more expensive because your rate has gone up. And so the idea behind increasing those short-term lending rates is that, again, it increases the cost and therefore less people are willing to buy. So it increases supply and brings the prices down. Again, kind of that supply and demand economics. So with the Fed putting a lot of pressure through those increased short-term interest rates, that's going to bring inflation down. And when that comes down, we fully expect that mortgage rates are going to follow because they have historically over time. So we fully expect that sometime later this year, we're going to see lower rates than even we're experiencing right now. Hopefully, maybe into the, the mid to lower fives uh, rather than the mid sixes that we're experiencing right now. But you had mentioned seller paid closing costs and utilizing those to help with buy downs. And I wanna share two ways that people can do that. One is the permanent buy down, uh, and it is what it sounds like. You buy the rate permanently down. So if let's say the going rate uh, is six and a half percent, maybe you buy that down from six and a half to six, and that'll cost a certain amount of money. That would then keep your rate at that rate for the entire term of the mortgage. But there's another option, which is to do a temporary buy down. And a temporary buy down can sometimes be uh, more substantial in terms of the payment savings that you realize, but as it sounds, it's temporary, right? So you buy down the rate, let's say 2% for the first year. So instead of six and a half, you get uh, a four and a half rate for the first year, then five and a half for the second year, and then it stays at six and a half for the life of the loan. A lot of people confuse those with like adjustable rate mortgages. They're not adjustable rate mortgages. They are fixed rate mortgages with the seller helping to cover the difference in the interest rate. But one thing we're doing for our clients right now that I want to make sure that everybody's aware of is we're offering a certainty guarantee to help take advantage of the market right now where there are sellers willing to negotiate. And then as long as you refinance within two years after closing with us, we will do that refinance at no cost. That way you can take advantage of the benefit associated with the fact that rates are going to come down and you can use a temporary buy down to kind of subsidize the payment temporarily, and then refinance to get the permanent benefit of the lower interest rate. Any thoughts on that kind of program and how it might impact buyers? It's the first time I've heard of anyone doing it. I think it's fantastic. Um, and I think it gives buyers a lot of peace of mind being able to um, being able to, to use a temporary buy down, knowing that um, you know they're going to be safe and protected and their mortgage payment is going to be fixed at, at a particular level. So uh, kudos to you guys. It's it's inventive, it's creative, and, and I like it. Yeah. One of the things that people should know about temporary buy-downs is that when the seller contributes to the temporary buy-down, basically, again, they're subsidizing the monthly payment on a, on a monthly basis. And so all that money goes into a savings account. And if you've got money left over at the time that you do a refinance, that money just doesn't disappear. It actually goes towards the principal reduction on your mortgage. So if you did that two-year buy-down, that two-year stair step, and you refinanced a year in, any money that's remaining in there, that'll come off the mortgage balance. So it's not like you lose it. So kind of in our world, uh, what I consider to be the best of both worlds, I get the lower interest rate through the seller contributing because you got the negotiation power and uh, do it before rates drop so much that it gets competitive in the market so that that way you're competing against a lot of other buyers again. So anyway, uh, something that may be helpful to uh, buyers out there considering uh, purchasing Queen Creek or around the Valley. Any other overall thoughts as far as the, the Queen Creek Valley or just uh, real estate in general that you might want to share? I think, I think um, it, it's a great time to be a buyer right now. It's a great time to be a buyer in Queen Creek. Anyone who's familiar with the area, they see the construction, they see the retail, they see the new home constructions that are going up. Um, you know, people compare Queen Creek a lot to the Gilbert of 10 years ago. And, um, you know, the, the plans that the, that the local government is making and the partnerships with the, that they have uh, with, with a variety of different organizations across the valley is really turning Queen Creek into a great place to live. Um, and right now it's still affordable. So, you know, as, a, uh, as someone who's advocating for buyers, um, you know, in line with what all of the numbers say, um, it's a good time to buy, especially if, if, if you and your agent and your and your lender can take advantage of some of these buy down programs. Um, we are, you know, we're, we're, 
were significantly houses house home values are significantly under where they were at this time last year certainly the year before even the year before that um so if you've been on the fence but wanting to make a buy and have some questions you know reach out to your lender reach out to your real estate agent um and ask those questions because it's a very viable time to think about purchasing a home absolutely well thank you so much jeremy for your contribution today and of course if anybody's looking to buy in clean creek it doesn't already have a real estate agent jeremy would be a fantastic option and of course we'd love the opportunity to help you out with a mortgage so thanks again appreciate it scott